Okay, this video will be your one-stop shop for capture cards and HDMI. So how to set up a HDMI capture card with a camera. My plan is I'm gonna link you in the description to a full chapter breakdown of this video. It might be a quite a long video, about 15 minutes or so, but if you have any problems, I'll link you to this video in future so you can find the answer and what the best way of doing things is. But if I start by giving you the challenges that you'll face. So cameras, DSLRs, if you're using them for the purpose I'm using it for here, where I'm making a video and the camera is about six feet away, um, auto shut off mode. So some cameras warm up and shut off automatically. That's a challenge. When you're streaming with the camera, you don't want the menus of the camera showing via your HDMI. So a clean HDMI is important. That's a challenge. Uh, well, depending on the camera you've got. Black bars showing on the side of the camera footage. Some cameras have a different aspect ratio. So coming in a bit hot there. So the camera aspect ratio will be needed adjusting. I'll show you how I did that. The focus. So if your camera is six feet away from you like it is now, you don't want to continuously have to go over there and focus it manually. And if something moves, it's a bit long. Uh, turning on or off the camera. So I have it on a button where I turn my camera on. What default menu does it go to in camera? I don't want to have to go around and turn it off to a different mode. Time limits. How long can you film for without the camera turning off? Um, that's some challenges that I'm going to cover in this video. But if we go straight into it, into the section of how to set up a HDMI capture card with camera, any camera. So I'll show you my setup here. These are the cables you'll need for setting up your camera. I have a capture card, which is a cheap capture card from eBay, which was uh, Epox Waxy, I think, or channel did a review on it. I'll link you to that video. He did quite a good breakdown and explained the, the full down details of it. But you want a USB cable where you plug this into but here what i'm doing is plugging in a hdmi cable into the capture card and then you need this important cable which is what i'm plugging into the camera the camera there is a 5d mark ii so this is your setup for the wiring and that's how it will be ready the longer the hdmi cable the further away you can sit and that's your overview there but if i give you a bit more detail about those what you want is this cable this cable is a female HDMI to a mini HDMI. And the reason you want that is a normal HDMI is a normal HDMI size, which fits in monitors, computers, TVs, you know, you know what I mean? But that is a normal HDMI. The phone, the camera even, the cameras have different HDMI sizes. It's a mini HDMI size. When I ordered my capture card, I did not know that. And I had a HDMI cable already at home. I thought I'll just plug it in and it'll work. But because I've never really used the cameras with HDMI, I realized, wait a minute, that is a mini HDMI size. So then I had to go online and order the converter from HDMI mini to HDMI full. And I even ordered the wrong angle. That's a left pointing when you want a right pointing. So it points down. So really would have been better that way. But you can learn from my mistake. Okay, so that's the cables. Then the HDMI, like I showed you, plugs in. That plugs into the capture card. You've already seen this on the top-down view. And then that goes into USB. That goes to the camera. So that's setting up your camera, the wiring elements of it. I'm going to be testing three cameras. I have a Canon HDC camcorder which has a HDMI out. I have a 5D Mark II. I'll show you sample footage of all of these linked in the chapters. This has a HDMI out. The camera I'm using at the moment to film this is a 550D T2i in America. I'm using that already with the Canon EOS utility tool, webcam utility tool. That's what you're seeing right now. So do you really change? I'll give you a section in this to say why. I didn't change and why I'm not using the capture card because it's more work than it's than it needs to be even though it's set up I'll explain that okay so that's that bit camera settings so you've got all your wiring set up ready you've plugged that into the USB you plug that into your camera 
your camera's powered on, the battery's turned, the camera's turned on, it's on your tripod, what next? You need to see it on your computer. I'm using OBS. So on OBS, the settings are different to add a camera. You add it by clicking the plus icon on the OBS, Streamlabs OBS. You go to video capture device, you add source. It brings up a screen here, which I'll show you. I already have the utility, utility webcam, but I'll do add a new source, call it new cap for the new capture device. Add source. And let me just get this because it's too hot on there. Okay, that went straight to the default screen view. But here I'll show you a quick look at the settings that you need on your camera. I did custom, I did 1080, 1920 by 1080. I made sure FPS frames per second highest and the few little settings there that I recommend, but you can see those on screen. And partial, no, I'll do full color range done. And then it'll show you the camera, which I can show you here. That's a view of the camera. That's my 5D Mark II. You can see there's two black bars on the side, but that's like a feed directly from the HDMI of the computer. That's how it looks. I've not focused it yet, but you can see that focus bar in the middle of the screen. That's the challenge I was talking about. So I couldn't find a fix to get rid of that on the camera. You have to install Magic Lantern to fix that, which basically lets you take it off, but I haven't done that. So, okay, here, yeah, that's nice, nice angle there. You can see it at. And that's just the, the setup I did earlier with the 5D Mark II. And that's how it looks. And you can get rid of the black bars in OBS by clicking Alt-Click and just shrinking down the screen. So well, that's what I'm doing right there. So you can shrink the bars from the side, getting rid of the, the black bars and readjusting the screen. So it fills a 1080p 16 by 9 ratio. But that's how you do that. So that was a pre-recorded session menu settings so in the camera that was a 5d mark ii i showed you now i'm going to flip to my 550d which is recording my 5d on the desk you can see on this camera i have a grid view which i don't want to show again it has the black bars on the side we don't want the black bars when you flip on the menu from the back of the camera i went to menu and then i went to the display settings uh, even live view settings and those are available in different menus that come under different things. But live view function settings. Here I went to grid display and I could turn the grid display off on the back of the camera. Because I want it to be a clean HDMI. Well, as clean as I can get it. And you can see there that autofocus is set to live mode. Um, and you can save these settings because what will happen is each time you turn the camera off, it defaults back to a set setting. If you go into the canon camera settings you can actually reset it and save a new standard if that was registered to my menu which means you're saving the current settings to the menu when it starts up again it'll save and kick off with that standard default setting you find live view there click ok it saves it um i tested it on the panasonic hdc so this segment is to show you how it looks panasonic hdc this is a quick test of a Panasonic HDC TM700 via the HDMI cable and capture card being used. Let's see how it performs. Okay, this is a good look at the HD. Ooh, face autofocus doesn't need to be on. Can we turn the autofocus off? Manual. I didn't put it on manual. Quick menu. Exit. I think it only shows it around that way. So that was this camera here. I did that little test earlier. So that was a normal camcorder. The feed out of that was actually better. If that makes sense. I didn't get the background blur that I wanted from a DSLR, but it was easier to set up that camera than it was my DSLR. But then I did the 550 test. Okay, quick test of the Canon T2i. And it's going via HDMI. Can't get rid of this, this box here. I might have to install Magic Lantern. But this is the quality. That's the quality at the moment. I'll compare this to the old video capture method to see if it was any better. But yep. Yeah. 
60 frames a second let me just make sure it's max okay so that was a look at the hdmi view what you're seeing right now is actually the canon eos utility tool i've had people ask me how am i getting rid of the black bars this is obs if i show you quickly the black bars are still actually here there's one and there's two in obs you can alt click and get rid of the bars well not get rid of them but crop them out so this is how you get rid of them in obs if you're doing a skype call or something they will show well i thought i'd make this like a big video where you can see everything basically so that's my light that normally points down on my desk shots but that's how it looks with the black bars and this records at 1280 by 720 it's a default view via usb of the camera display so it's not actually a feed of the recording capability so you don't get like a 60 frames a second or anything like that but for what i do i prefer this so here's the reasons why i preferred using the canon eos webcam tool firstly i can close the canon eos webcam obs screen down so my feed is i start i push a button here which is turning on the lights turns on my mics turns on the camera and that camera is sitting there waiting for what it needs to do via the usb i go into canon eos tool the old one i open up the camera i go to live view function it shows me a display on the computer of what the camera is seeing i do auto focus so it auto focuses to where i'm sitting at the time i close that program down old canon eos tool i go to the system tray icons and i right click on it and quit the program I open up OBS when it comes into OBS it actually shows as a video capture device already focused to where I'm sitting and then in this I've already preset it up where I've got rid of the bars which I'm doing right now again to show you it live I adjust the size of the screen to make it fit just like that so that is a look at that feed it's focused when i turned it on it automatically defaulted to the view the challenge you're going to have with the capture card cable business is you're turning it on it goes to the menu mode you have to go around to the camera turn it off menu mode into live view mode you come back down you sit down oh it's slightly out of focus you get up you go back around adjust the focus come back sit down again that's some of the challenges i've had anyway and then you have to go back down to the camera settings the menu display options shows a little box you have to install magic lantern if you take the memory card out and the magic lantern is not on the memory card and you change the memory card and you corrupt the files you have to install magic lantern again I, with my setup i basically sit here push a button record everything as one take and it's done the quality might not be as good as you want it to be which leads us back to what do you want to use the camera for if you're doing camera feed you can have this as a camera you can even make it a smaller camera so it sticks in the corner which i can show you here you could do that have it in the corner and then have the ps4 or whatever plugged in via the computer uh, capture card business and have that in the background at 60 frames a second so there's a few ways of doing it i'm hoping this video was helpful to you if it wasn't i'm sorry for wasting your time but i needed to share this i'm going to link you to this video in the future so people that struggle with setting up different elements of the webcam setup use this i'll link you to this video here which is another large long video about webcam alternatives you can use your action camera as a webcam you can use your mobile phone as a webcam you can use a dslr as a webcam and there's anything i missed yeah so check that out thank you see you on one of that video now